No, I'm not talking. I'm talking synth. Hey guys, uh, quick intro to the video. Uh, a couple things you should know. Number one, this is a really long rant uh, about um, the Behringer ARP 2600 and just kind of uh, my general thoughts and uh, feelings about the uh, ARP. The other thing you should know is I am wearing the same shirt as yesterday because this is not filmed all at the same time. So, also, at the very end of the video, I've included a track that's brand new from the band that I've been, The Gentry. So, i definitely appreciate it if you check it out. Um, stick around and, you know, let me know what you think. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, it's been a while since I've posted any sort of content, and uh, that's a really bad habit to start off every video saying that. Uh, but the truth is, is, I just have not spent the time uh, haven't had the time to really create content. Um, that's changing. Uh, I've made a promise to myself that I will put up something at least once a week. Um, can't really vouch for what it's going to be. I don't really, uh, I don't really know. Um, so we'll find out. Um, I think that, uh, there's definitely going to be some content that is a bit more labored over that I've been actually working on for a while. Um, so yeah, um, this is the last time um, that I'm gonna open a video with, it's been a while. So anyways, um, wanted to talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is um, the ARP 2600. More specifically, the fact that Behringer has um, stepped forward out of the shadows and shown off um, images of their ARP 2600 that they're working on. This is actually mm, the second uh, synth that they, well, maybe the, the third synth that they announced that they were gonna make. Um, a, lot of, a lot of folks may not know, but they started with their ARP Odyssey clone. They teased that for uh, a while and then just kind of vanished and disappeared. And then out of nowhere, about a year later, they announced their Model D. Um, and we know that the, the how that went um, that's out um, so basically after they had um, kind of talked a bit more in depth on gear sluts uh, the forum um, about the d uh, uli said that hey i've always wanted a ton of synths um, when i was younger i would see all these synths that um, were out of my price range or just too difficult to actually track down one of those being the ARP 2600, and the other one being the Oscar, um, which we still haven't really heard much about, but being as they've finally shown off images of the 2600, uh, one can hope that the Oscar is not far behind. Um, um, and you know, since they made those uh, announcements, or since Uli talked about that and, and stated, we are going to do a 2600, we are going to do an Oscar, they haven't really talked in any real form uh, about either of those since, and since then there's been a, a slew of uh, other clones that they've announced and that are already about to come out, like the uh, MS-101. So, um, the 2600 to me was always kind of uh, my desert island mono synth. Um, Ever since I was a kid and I looked at the liner notes of the Downward Spiral, um, you know, um, just the name alone had kind of sparked a imagination. Uh, it, it sounds like a piece of scientific lab equipment or um, could possibly be, um, you know, a reference to HAL 9000. Sorry, uh, I don't know. It's just always been a synth that has uh, captured my imagination. And the... Uh, Odyssey and the 2600 definitely share a ton of uh, sonic uh, similarities. So, uh, you know, anytime I have heard uh, the ARP sound on, on things like uh, LCD Sound System's American Dream, the opening track, uh, Oh Baby, or um, also recently like uh, Soul Wax's uh, album from Dewey uh, opens up with a track called Pretense and to my ears sounds very much like the ARP sound. It's uh, clangy and metallic and uh, detuned and uh, pretty big. So, uh, you know, it's just always been a, a synth that 
uh, my imagination has totally been captured by. Uh, after Behringer had announced, hey, we're going to do this, I continued to hold off on picking up um, a 2600. Uh, more specifically, um, I was very, very uh, into the idea of getting a, one of the human computers uh, kits, the TTSH. Unfortunately, I'm not much of a DIY guy. Uh, maybe it's a skill that I'll develop more over the, uh, over the years, but probably not. Um, yeah, I made a couple of my 5U modules, but that's pretty simple stuff. Um, so I continued to debate, do I get a TTSH? Um, I'd kind of finally gotten to a financial point where I could um, potentially afford getting a TTSH and putting it together. And every time I almost pulled the trigger, um, the kits were sold out or um, going for kind of uh, higher prices on the resale market. Um, and, uh, you know, to be honest, it's a, it, building a, a kit like that is a bit overwhelming when you don't have, um, you know, a lot of experience in DIY. And uh, God bless a lot of the folks on the forums. Um, some folks are very, very helpful and uh, willing to, um, you know, give advice on what you should do and um, the best way to go about, um, you know, piecing together these things. But a lot of folks are... Um, shall we say, uh, their response are, come on, man, it's <laughs> just follow the instructions, which, yeah, if you've got that, that skill set, um, you know, a lot of it, um, seems fairly straightforward. So I continued to wait and wait and wait. And I, as, uh, the years went by, um, I just decided, you know, um, maybe Behringer's e either dropped this project or, Maybe it's just too far down the line. So I bought a TTSH last year and uh, it's, it's everything I wanted it to be. It's, uh, it's incredible. Um, the sound is amazing. Um, there's like endless hours of getting lost in discovery of sound. Um, it, it, it's, it's a monster of a synth. Um, and then of course, um, <clears throat> about what, Two three weeks ago, Behringer finally dropped the image um, showing the, um, you know, it, what looks to be potentially a prototype, um, if not a very early prototype, of what the body looks like. And uh, every time Behringer had made any kind of announcement uh, on Facebook uh, or in social media, I'd always chime in with, "Where's the 2600?" Um, and um, a lot of folks didn't, were not even aware that that is literally um, the first synthesizer they announced after like uh, going into production on the D. Uh, and typically I would just get radio silence. Um, occasionally Behringer would like thumbs up, but they wouldn't actually say anything. Um, so <clears throat> um, the thing that I wanted to see uh, as a TTSH owner uh, to justify and validate purchasing uh, another 2600 would be I, you know, I'd, I'd like it to be the same size as the original. Um, I'm a 5U fan. Uh, I don't have any problem with Eurorack or, um, uh, you know, smaller size synths. They're just not for me. Um, at least uh, I as far as if I had my choice. Uh, I have a uh, Behringer D. Um, you know, again, I think that uh, at the end of the day, um, sound is, is, is king. So how does the synth sound? That's the most important thing. It's not necessarily uh, format, digital, analog um, size, but for my workflow, um, I tend to be most inspired by things that I can get my hands on. This is uh, why I have a considerable amount of outboard gear. Um, for me, like the kinesthetic value of actually having a, a machine right in front of you that you're touching and tweaking knobs. Um, it just leads to, you know, discovery of different things that um, sometimes automation and, and those types of, uh, you know, things are, are also completely valid parts of workflow. But uh, I, I like, I like hands on. Um, and for me, the size issue is uh, I just, you know, <laughs> it's inspiring to have, um, kind of a monolith that you're working with. So uh, 
I was happy to see that um, Behringer's um, kind of struck a balance between the original size um, and the TTSH. I think it's um, it's technically probably smaller than the TTSH from um, width wise, but um, height it's probably a little bit bigger than the TTSH. Um, They've definitely decided to sacrifice a few things. I'm um, cautiously optimistic about the fact that they're using um, an effects processor built in that I'm, they haven't really gone into specifics. I'm assuming it's very similar to the effects processor they have built into the Odyssey. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Spring Verb. Uh, it's got a very specific feeling. Um, to my ears, I don't think it's better than any other type of reverb. It's just a very specific characteristic. Um, I hate to say this, but it adds a vintage um, sound to things. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty optimistic that the effects processor they're building into it will probably have many different um, and multiple types of like a spring verb sound, along with a host of other things. Um, so I'm interested to see um, where they go with that. The other big thing that um, is uh, making it justifiable to purchase another one um, is going to be the fact that they say it has, quote, deep MIDI implementation or something to that effect. Uh, so by the fact that they are simply, not simply just saying MIDI implementation um, and that they have uh, USB DIN and, the, yeah, USB and DIN MIDI, um, I'm guessing and we're, uh, you know, I'm hoping that uh, there'll be a lot of uh, modulation matrix possibilities. Um, it's obviously not gonna be as simple as note on and off, otherwise they would not call it deep MIDI implementation. Um, I think that definitely unlocks a lot of possibilities that are not in something uh, like a real ARP 2600 or quote, quote unquote, sorry, original um, ARP 2600 or you know the TTSH. Um, so for me, uh, I would have honestly probably bought one regardless uh, of the, whether or not they were adding anything to it because I would like to have something that goes into my live rig. So uh, definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing what kind of announcements they make and showing off what kind of MIDI implementation um, they're gonna be, you know, putting into this unit. Uh, the other thing that I think is, may or may not be a shocker to some folks is that the TTS, I'm sorry, not the TTSH, the Behringer 2600 is definitely not gonna be a $300 synth. Um, I think, and I uh, assume, and I could be very wrong, uh, I think that a lot of the kind of higher end, uh, more complicated uh, since that Behringer has announced such as the CS80, um, the UBX, uh, the 2600, and then the other things that they're deeply hinting at. Jupiter is coming. Um, I, I think that this is going to be um, a foray uh, Behringer going into Behringer premium sense. Um, I don't think they're going to be tremendously expensive, but they're definitely going to probably start getting into the one to two thousand uh, dollar market. Um, don't know if the twenty six hundred is going to be that, but I definitely know that the twenty six hundred is it is not going to be a three hundred dollar cent. Um, <clears throat> I think that a uh, good example of that is, uh, you know, I'm actually a, a Behringer user. I've been a Behringer user. Like I have an MX-9000 down there. I've got, uh, for our live show, we use the uh, Behringer X-Air. Um, they make products that are not, um, you know, Fisher Price, 200 two or $300 um, price points. And uh, along with the really inex inexpensive stuff, I had a V-Amp um, way back in the day. Um, so it, it, it's not unheard of for Behringer to make products that are uh, a little bit more on the expensive side compared to their uh, entry level stuff. And I really think that what Behringer has been doing, and they've been doing a great job of it, is making a trove of uh, synths that are entry point priced, that um, sound fantastic, that have, uh, you know, 
quality, at least when it comes to sound, that rivals the originals um, like they've done in all their other markets um, that they address. And I think that what they're doing is building a lot of goodwill so they can start releasing products that they might make a few dollars on that are definitely going to be more expensive. So um, I think that I've kind of like covered most of the things I wanted to say, um, at least in this um, quick thoughts video on the 2600. What do you think? Are you ready to pay $1,000 or more for a Behringer product? Or do you think it always has to be and they should only be um, you know, releasing products that are in that three, $400 price range? Um, anyways, this is the first video for my project to do one a week. So I will be back in a week, um, come hell or high water. Uh, we're finishing um, filming a little bit more stuff on the Profit 5 versus Profit 6 video. I really don't know for sure if that's gonna be next week out, but it is coming very soon. Um, what are some other stuff that you want uh, me to talk about? <coughs> what are some other stuff in my um, studio that maybe you're a little interested in? Uh, again, there's a, a billion great channels on YouTube that uh, go super in depth on all the stuff that I love. I just want to throw in on it too. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching this really long uh, rant. Um, what are your thoughts on the 2600? Um, and yeah, like, subscribe, and share. See you guys next week. YouTube, I wish you could smell what I'm smelling.